So welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited that you are here and uh, being a part of DesignZill's Intro to Inbound webinar. And I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day to be with us. We have an exciting and eye-opening uh, hour of information for you, and I promise that you'll be glad that you arrived. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, today, during this presentation, um, our goal is that you will get a full understanding of what inbound marketing is and how it works, be blown away by the benefits of inbound, you'll learn how to create an inbound strategy that you can use for your own business, and you'll begin to see how traditional marketing practices may be keeping you from reaching your full potential. Okay, let's get started. So for as long as there have been products to sell, there has been marketing. The goal of marketing has always been and will continue to be to gain new customers. But our ability to reach and speak to these new customers has truly been a function of technology. Over the years, technology has made it possible for us to reach more and more potential customers. From radio, to TV, to the internet, our audience size keeps growing and growing. We got smarter as we learned how to use SEO tools to find the right customers, but our audiences just keep on growing. Today, with inbound marketing, we change how we engage with these potential customers because we develop relationships with them and engage them in a whole new way. Let's look at how. Now, my guess is, is that if you ask most people if they knew what inbound marketing is, they would tell you that inbound is it's blogging, it's SEO, it's social media, ebooks, and landing pages. And they wouldn't be entirely incorrect. These are all tactics used to generate inbound marketing. But the real definition of inbound marketing is turning visitors to leads, leads to contacts, contacts to customers, and customers to advocates. Now that definition actually sounds like a goal of inbound, right? It's true, because while turning visitors to leads leads to contacts and contacts to customers and customers to advocates is our goal, blogs, SEO, social, ebook, and landing pages are the tactics, and without that, none of it matters. But it's the strategy, it's the right tools, and it's the resources to get the job done that truly matters with inbound. It's like if you wanted to build your dream house. You know what the finished product of this beautiful home will look like. So you go out and you buy all the materials you need. You need wood and cement and nails. But if you don't have a blueprint, if you don't have tools or people to do the work, that pile of materials you bought will never become your dream house. Since it's the middle section that makes everything work, today that's where we're going to focus our inbound on strategy, tools, and resources. So if you want to, you can leave here and go start planning on how to use the methodology of inbound marketing to achieve your own business goals. So let's start by learning what the foundation is. The inbound methodology is based upon the principles of the buyer's journey. Consumers travel through many stages as they prepare to purchase something, and our marketing may hit them at any of these stages. So it's very important that we know what they are. To fully understand, let's use an example. We'll follow a person who is looking for a daycare for their child. The first possible stage is the awareness stage. In this stage, consumers are really just researching or trying to learn more about something they're interested in, but they're not ready to buy. In our daycare example, likely this could be a pregnant mother who is a uh, uh, gone back to work or trying to decide whether she wants to go back to work after maternity leave. Maybe she's trying to figure out the advantages to daycare versus nanny. Or maybe she's trying to see if it would be more effective to just stay home. Or maybe she wants to see how a daycare experience may impact her child's new child's development. She's likely searching on the web for ex expert information that will help her get closer to making a choice about whether or not she wants to use a daycare. Well, the next possible stage is the consideration stage. In this stage, the consumer is getting closer to the buying need, but is still hesitant to move forward. In our example, our mom may be looking for advice from her friends or people like her that have used a daycare, or she could be searching for the right things to look for when interviewing the daycare, or maybe she's just trying to figure out the right size of the daycare that makes sense for her needs. The point is, she's still learning. 
but she's asking questions that are more aligned with the next stage of actually making a purchase. The next possible stage is the decision stage or the buying stage. In this stage, the consumer is going to buy, but now she needs to choose who to buy from. For our mom, she may be getting reviews of her top three daycare contenders. She may be researching the different prices for daycare facilities she likes or looking to see their hours of operation or other rules that affect her family. And lastly, there is the delight stage. In this stage, the consumer has already purchased and have become your customer and they need to continually be taken care of so they continue to be a repeat customer as well as an advocate and share with others about your business. For our mom, her child is probably already attending the daycare and she likes it when she gets emails and sees Facebook posts on the daycare successes and new programs they put into place that make her choice even better. And when a friend is about to have a baby, well, she is likely to recommend the daycare facility. So you may have already started to figure this out during this description that most of our current marketing practices focus on the decision stage. Direct mailers, e-blasts, paid ads, they all focus on getting in front of someone when they are ready to make a purchase. It is instant gratification marketing because even though the ROI, the return on investment or the results may be a lower percentage, half a percent, a 2% success rate, we like it because the result is still a sale. And well, that is the goal of our marketing, right? But hopefully we're starting to see what's missing. The daycare likely targets mothers of babies and small children because they're in the decision stage. But if they spent time also targeting women in the other stages, their return on investment would be much greater because the number of potential prospects grows. Let's take a look. Let's see the entire universe of potential daycare buyers in all four stages. Let's say that that's 100,000 people. And a daycare expects that 1% of all buyers will select their daycare. So 1% of the total 100,000 is 1,000 new customers. But if we look at the current way we market, not the inbound way, and only look at direct marketing, targeting people in the decision stage, and let's say that only 30% of our entire universe of the 100,000 people are in the buying stage, that drops the daycare's universe down to 30,000 prospects. If 1% of those buyers buy from this daycare, there's only 300 new customers. As you can see, there is a significant difference. And truth be told, the ROI percentages of traditional marketing tactics are diminishing because so many brands are trying to get their message in front of people in the decision stage that marketers have had no choice but to become more in your face about it. And us consumers, are not having it. The inbound marketing philosophy is based on the truth that consumers do not buy the same way today that they did 10 years ago. The internet and what we've done with online marketing over the last decade has caused this change. There are three major reasons why consumers no longer believe brands and traditional interruptive forms of advertising alone aren't nearly as effective as they once were. First is the media landscape has become insanely cluttered. There's a magazine, a TV channel, a radio station, and a website for literally every topic under the sun. The landscape is so cluttered that brands have become forced to be very disruptive in their messages just to get noticed. And us consumers, well, we just decide to look away. And not only do we have so many forms of advertising, there are also so many types of each to deal with. In 1920, there was only one radio station. In 2011, there were 14,700. In 1946, America had 12 broadcasting TV stations. And in 2011, there were over 1,700. In 1998, just 15 years ago, the average consumer saw or heard 1 million marketing messages, almost 3,000 per day. Today, according to Jay Walker Smith, we see 5,000 marketing messages a day. And in 2014, it was reported that there are 1,500 stories competing to show up in your Facebook newsfeed at any given moment. It feels almost impossible for any one business to get their message out loud and clear so it gets heard. 
Which leads us, of course, to reason number two, that current advertising and marketing methodologies aren't working. In order for marketers to be effective and get their ads and messages heard, we've been forced to be, take more creative license. We've been pushing the envelope a little more each day, and we're actually dealing with a history of deceptive advertising. The job of a marketer has gotten so tough that we may have crossed the line one too many times with our quote-unquote creative license. Consumers are actually so used to hearing false claims and deceit in advertising. So even when our ad is honest and clever, it's perceived as dishonest. The list on the screen has really changed consumers' attitudes toward the marketing they're exposed to. And marketers can't rely on catchy jingles and clever marketing to be effective. Authenticity today is the only way to win. Here's a stat for you. 63% of consumers need to hear a company claim three to five times before they can actually believe them. It's tough. And the last reason why traditional marketing methodologies are struggling is because today's technology empowers the consumer. Today, we have access to tools and information that enable us to dodge the interruptive messages and instead seek out information when they're ready. We can simply block what we don't want to be bothered with. We've got DVRs to get rid of TV, uh, TV commercials. We can get on the do not call list, the do not mail list. And those are just a few ways we can keep the marketing messages out. And the same way technology keeps messages away from us, we also have new tools to allow us just to get the messages we want to hear when we want to hear them. We've got smartphones, social media, and of course, Google. The whole concept of inbound marketing is to offer consumers what they need, when they need it, and engage them rather than sell them. That's why we say over here at DesignZillas, market with a magnet, not a sledgehammer. So the question you're probably asking yourself is, based on all I just heard, all this chaos we've just identified, how can inbound really work? Well, first, let's take a look at the principles inbound marketing is based on. First, building trust, not skepticism, from your prospects. Two, being loved, not ignored by your customers. And three, outsmarting, not outspending your competition. The inbound philosophy is backed by a methodology that helps brands attract, convert, close, and delight visitors, leads, and customers through a variety of channels, such as social media, blogging, SEO, landing pages, forums, and email. So the answer to the question of how does it work is the methodology facilitates the buyer's journey through a sales funnel from strangers to promoters of your company. Let's take a deeper look. If we look at the methodology we just described as a sales funnel, it would look like this. With Inbound, we create a strategy and a way of communicating with people in every stage they are in before they buy and after. We create engagement conversations from the top of the funnel when we first meet as strangers and we educate, engage, and nurture them until they get to the bottom of the funnel as our biggest promoters. Let's break it down a little bit more. This image shows the buyer's journey we've been talking about. The top portion here shows us the various places a consumer might be in when they're searching for information about what they need. Let's walk through each stage and look at how people travel along the buyer's journey and look at ways we might engage them that are aligned with the mindset they are in when they're searching for their answers. First, let's start with the attract phase. And let's use our daycare example again. But this time, instead of analyzing the process from the buyer's perspective, Let's look at what the daycare might do to engage people in these different stages. In the attract stage, our moms were merely searching for information to better prepare them for what they may need, which could be a new daycare. We said earlier that our mothers to be are likely looking for details on the advantages to daycare versus a nanny. Would it be more effective to just stay home? Would she want to see how a daycare experience might impact her child's new development? So as a seasoned daycare facility, we can position ourselves to provide that information. We'll likely write blogs 
um, about it. Promote those blogs on social media channels. Fully optimize those blogs so they're easily found when our moms are searching and drive them to pages on our website to access the information so we can begin to introduce her to the daycare simply by giving her the information she was looking for. Next, we want to convert this mom to be a lead. By a lead, we mean that she happily provides her email address and maybe some more details in exchange for the research information we're providing. We encourage this relationship by providing even more valuable information she needs. However, we present it like an offer and use things like call to action buttons on our website, landing pages that have contact forms on it. So if a mom-to-be wants to read an ebook on the top 10 most important questions to ask the people who be caring for your child, we'll provide it to her after an even exchange of giving us a little information about herself. And the more our mom clicks on, visits, and downloads information, the more we learn about her as we create a profile about her that allows us to really target content to her specific needs, likes, dislikes, and behaviors. What happens next? is fascinating. After days or months or sometimes years of our mom being a consumer of the daycare's content, she is suddenly ready to buy. As the daycare has transformed in the mom's eyes from a vendor to an expert in the field and a thought leader, when it's time for her to buy, she'll travel back to the daycare's website looking for things that most of us already know to put on our website like price information and hours of operation and testimonials and reviews. And when it's time for her to be closed or sold to, she will look at this information as the truth and not with a skeptical eye thinking that she's being sold because she already has a relationship with us. And then once she becomes a customer, the daycare continues to delight our mom with even more content. And what happens naturally is our mom becomes a promoter, an advocate, a natural referral for other moms and dads looking for daycares. With inbound marketing, it's all about the customer's needs and not all about what the brand wants the customer to know. It's pretty simple. The customer goes online to search for something. You serve up a piece of information, a piece of content they want, they're willing to exchange for their information, and then you place them into a contact management system so you can keep track of all their engagement and learn more about them along the way and continually provide them with relevant marketing that appeals to them. So now that we've got a pretty good understanding of how inbound marketing works, let's look at how you actually create an inbound campaign. Remember at the beginning of our conversation, we talked about the definition of inbound and the tactics we might use, but it's that stuff in the middle that make it all work and get you the results you need. So let's spend a few minutes going over each of these in the middle because this is where we really need to understand so we can make everything work the way we want it to. First, we have to create our strategy. When developing our inbound strategy, or as we call it over here at DesignZilla, your blueprint, you need to first identify your user personas. User personas are more than just figuring out your target audience. You have to figure that out first but once you know who your target audience or your ideal customer is, you must look at where they spend time online. What are their pain points? What are their common objections? Next, you want to figure out the kinds of content your user persona most likely wants to read and needs to look for when they're doing their research. And then what channels are they likely to begin their content gathering? Is it SEO? Is it word of mouth? Is it social? Is it a combination of all three? Then once our strategy is complete, we need to get the right tools to make it all possible. First and foremost, you need a great website. A website that is nothing more than an online brochure is not going to be engaging or interactive. All you need is a website, and what you need is a website that you can constantly update with new content easily since content is what's the driving force in this consumer brand relationship. Then you need a marketing management software tool. Because let's face it, it would not even be possible to keep track of every visitor to your site, everything they clicked on or downloaded, or information they provided. All that information is vital for our campaign and for us to do what we promise, which is to provide personalized and relevant marketing. 
And lastly, we need analytics. We need to see how our campaigns are doing, our content, and our messages are doing so we can react to our consumers' needs quickly and efficiently. To execute our strategies, we then need resources or people to get the job done. Content developers, content writers are vital to this process. Someone who is serving as the strategist to review the results and help pivot campaigns as the campaigns teach us what our customers want, and then a sales team that will use all the data we've gathered to help close the deals and turn our leads into happy and fulfilled customers. So after all this effort, does it work? Hmm. After just one month of marketing, the perfect combination of an engaging website and inbound marketing methodologies, DesignZilla's helped Easy Rent-A-Car decrease their site abandonment rate decrease by 88% during the first month after launch leading to an increase of more than 500 additional bookings for the business at an average of 125 per reservation. We also helped produce an increase of up to 73% goal conversion across all devices, which led to an increase in $1 million in revenue in just two months after launch. And three months after launch, we helped increase their conversion rate for organic search by 85% and increase the amount of time someone spent on the site by 14%. And all of this was done by not using traditional SEO tactics, what we know of as SEO tactics, link building, citation building, but true content through the buyer's journey, a great website, responsive design, and proper keywords. So let's talk about money. In the end, so let's talk with the results as amazing as these. Why aren't more marketers jumping on the inbound bag wagon? Well, that's a great question. Let's look at some of the answers. First, let's start with money. In the end, inbound is actually cheaper. Most traditional forms of marketing are cost per something. In direct mail, it's cost per piece. In email, it's cost per address. In Google ads, it's cost per click. But most inbound agencies and software tools are a monthly retainer. Instead of a pay-per-play methodology, most, if not all, inbound agencies develop partner relationships with their clients. This kind of a relationship is both financially predictable for the business, so they can forecast the revenue budgets better, and it gives room for the agency to do their work and develop results organically because expectations are clear. The other area is time. Time may be a reason that some people consider inbound, don't consider inbound as an option at first. Since traditional direct marketing is usually conducted as individual campaigns, each campaign has a start and an end and a typical ROI. And even if the result isn't awesome, a business will see the result quickly and gain that instant gratification that we all desire and want. The problem is you have to do this over and over to get more results. Inbound has more of a hockey stick looking result. Initially, the results are slow coming in, but they build and they grow exponentially over time. And the eventual results far exceed what is possible with traditional marketing alone. But the business has to be someone who sees the big picture, has the patience to let the marketing do its thing. The results will come. It may take a little longer to get there, but the bonus, the results are ultimately far better. And last, my favorite, the perfect marketing campaign has three elements necessary to make it successful. It is 20% message or offer. It's 20% creative or design and 60% audience who you target your campaign to. All forms of traditional direct marketing must have this balance to work. In the online world, we have been able to nail message and creative, but for a long time, we've been guessing and hoping for the best when it comes to target audience, using the tools we have at our disposal with Google's help. But with marketing automation tools, we can now capture data and use what we know about our leads to segment and market specifically to their habits, their likes and dislikes, and where they are in the buying process. And since we can reach far more people economically on the web than in our traditional cost per something model, being able to target the right people at the right time completely changes the online marketing playing field. So why inbound? 
I hope that in this webinar today, we've answered a lot of your questions. Usually a presentation opens with statistics, but today we're going to close with some good ones. As you consider the effectiveness of why you may or may not want to use inbound marketing in your business, consider these. 200 million Americans have registered their phone number on the do not call list. 44% of direct mail is never opened. 91% of email users have unsubscribed from a company email they previously opted into. 86% of people skip television ads. 57% 50 of businesses have acquired a customer through their company blog. And inbound marketing costs 62% less per lead than traditional outbound marketing. We want to thank you very much for your time today. If you have any questions or you'd like to discuss this further in any way, please feel free to contact us. You can reach me, Jody Lane, at Jody, J-O-D-Y, at designzillas.com. And we hope you enjoy this webinar. Thank you very much.